Hello, a little bit more on design before we crack on with actually making the thing. Let's have a look. <coughs> right, graphs again. Can you see that? That is the graph of my really nice six footer. Uh, the overall shape is good but it's got little ripples and wobbles and dings and wibbles and stuff like that partly because I was 11 years less experienced then than I am now and partly because um, I didn't measure cross-sectional areas and things here's, a, here's Paul's second whip, this is my most recent ball whip as you can see much smoother much more even and less and fewer lumps and bumps. Uh, I'm going to make two whips, possibly three. This is the projected one. Um, 84 inches in total, 14 inch fiberglass handle foundation, lead weighting, a single filler layer, single basically shaping a layer of suede split uh, that runs the full length of the plaited belly. The belly will be eight strands all the way and then the strand ends I'll cut off um, evenly towards the the end of the overlay. Now if I made a six, I used to do eight strand bellies dropping to six strands and when you do that you end up with a slightly flat bit on the graph I think around about there's the end of the belly um, and then there are belly. yes I'd have dropped strands about there on this there's a little flat bit because instead of having a tapered core with an even cortex of plaiting over it uh, the plaiting gets a bit cramped the strands um, do this and the arrow becomes a bit too steep and the angle becomes a bit too steep and you see you drop a couple of strands into the core okay thin these down but I was carrying on those two strands um, as strand ends firstly for the second belly that's a core for the, the second belly um, wrong, wrong one this one core for second belly um, and then carrying on the, the, the second belly strands I'd go 12 or whatever down to 6 round 2 and you end up with a little flat bit where you, you've got the 6 um, going over 2 plus the core because the 2 themselves aren't tapering very much the long and the short of it is that you get a better shape with 8 strands all the way rather than 6 uh, round 2 at some point Okay, so what does that mean in terms of design for a whip like Paul's or a whip like mine, which has two plaited bellies? Um, if the strand ends for the first belly and the second belly are the same volume, then you should get a fairly even taper in that second in that section. Um, if you have thinner leather for the first belly than you do for the second belly and the strands are cut the same width there's there's less volume drop there's less taper in the the section between the first and the second belly than there is between the, the second belly and the overlay if both these like this designed on thirds these sections are the same if it's designed on the golden ratio right I'm going to be making a four foot ball whip as well based on the golden ratio um, with the lead in lieu of a first belly and the second belly in the overlay so if that were to be the, the strand ends for the first belly it's much shorter than for the second belly so it doesn't really matter what thickness of leather you use for these two parts it'll it'll you know you can tweak the variations uh, you can tweak the shape with with varying these uh, these sections right that brings us on to cross-sectional area 
Oh god, notes, 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 notes. Right. Okay, my 10 foot bull whip, that really nice handling one with a 15 inch handle, has two fillers and they're both the same length. One of them starts here and is, let me see that, and is a scythe to fit that chamfer. There's a core, a leather core cut into strips. There's a little sort of tang to hold that on and then the, the filler is cut into strips. And then the second filler goes all the way around the handle and carries on and wraps around the whole lot. And that worked fine. The core was shorter than the two fillers. The two fillers were the same length because I needed that cross-sectional of area of leather over that length to be greater than the strand drops of the first belly so that I would get a shape like that rather than a, a bit of a, a shallow bit here and then a steeper bit here and then another shallow bit later on. It's like what I was saying about that big 12 footer, the really heavy one that didn't handle very well. The, the, the weight distribution isn't sweet enough. Um, so this one, 14 inch handle, I'm losing an inch, so the end of the, the handle is a smidgen thicker. I'll have to choose a slightly thicker bit of leather to compensate. I'm going to do this, um, this filler as a single one. Because I'm using the, the, the leather, the, the leather, because I'm using lead weighting and the way I'm doing it is gives it a sort of a rigid spot not a rigid, but a, a firm spine, I can wrap a couple of layers of, of suede around that, bind it in place, and it'll be a really found, firm foundation for the belly. I don't need to cut it into strips. If I do, it runs the risk of pushing the lead weighting off center, which isn't going to help the handling. If it's just one triangle of leather, it only has two edges, so there's only the risk of two bumps, and a small risk if I handle it right. Um, looking at, I'm going to have to speak up above the rain because I'm still camping in Wales. Here is the graph for a four foot bull whip with a six and a half inch or so handle foundation in eight mil, one mil wall, mild steel. And because it's got lead weighting down to here, it's got a weight taper which I could calculate because the, the, the sections are in, in grams per meter. I can calculate exactly what that is if I can be bothered. But since it goes by feel, I haven't been asked doing that yet. But it looks like a very, very slow handling whip. That's the kind of shape I would hope to achieve with the, um, the forthcoming first edition with the 14 inch handle foundation, the lead weighting, a single layer of single triangle leather for the filler, not two separate ones, belly and overlay. Notes, graphs, cross section area taper, okie dokie. It's part of the sniffling, I've got a bit of a sniffle and a kind of a cold, sorry about this. Right, seven foot bullwhip with a 10 inch steel handle foundation, naturally falling, no lead. Um, still based on thirds, but with two bellies. Um, so what I'm going to do is have the core, which will be a leather core fitted there, that's 8mm, cross-sectional area. So by the time I get to the, the end of the first belly, I'm expecting a point diameter of around about five and a half, six. That's a, a big enough difference between the two for this to be a steeper taper than the strand ends of the belly because the length is going to be the same. If this was much longer and then a shorter belly strands as it would be for a golden ratio whip um, then I'm calculating more closely the actual cross-sectional area drop of leather at every point to get a sweet shape like so. Cross-sectional area taper. What have I got? Oh yeah, so notes. Both bellies, eight strand to the end. If I had a six strand belly for the first one, an eight strand belly for, uh, sorry. Six strand round two, first belly point. I'd be cutting them to four mils wide and I'd have eight of them falling away to nothing. 
if it was eight strands just around the end of the core and then gone there three mil wide so it's it's quite a bit less um, but these are but so eight going to six round two for here would be a steeper taper of strand ends than eight going to zero here okay however I'm not doing that if I want these two sections to be more or less the same then I can use the same skin cut carefully and hopefully there'll be the same um, taper of strand ends here as here I might want to tweak that a little bit by cutting the belly from a slightly thicker hide than the overlay um, so what I'll do is I'll be measuring my leather quite carefully when I come to that and head scratching and guessing and all the rest of it with a golden ratio whip because the strand ends were that a belly are shorter here than here it doesn't matter notes flat spots deeper blah blah lead difference tubes wraps naturally falling hmm I don't understand that calculator extrapolated fall ah yes um, with the golden ratio whips I um, I calculate the the length of fall and cracker as the multiple of the thong length minus the handle. Um, with thirds ratios like this, that would give quite a short fall. Um, and because that comes down to a narrow point, it's a short steep fall. So what I might do in this case is extrapolate the curve of the graph to get an ideal fall and cracker length. Uh, some people regard a fall as being um, a bit sacrificial. It wears back, you replace it when necessary, so it doesn't matter how long it is. But there is an ideal length for every component within a whip. What have we got? Core taper, filler taper, is it enough? Belly point, thickness? Um, yeah, might as well do weights as well. I weigh the handle foundations. I'm going to be weighing things throughout the, um, throughout the construction process. It's just more ammunition come the next whip. The more notes you can take and the more you can understand from them, unlike this, for example, it helps to not write gibberish, um, the better it is. Nominal thicknesses. Um, the suede split that I get is, for example, 1.4, 1.6 millimetres thick. However, oh yeah, and if, if I measured it on the device they have there, which has a, a wide-ish pad, and it lets it down nice and gently, you don't really put pressure on it. It lets it down rather than you pushing on it. So it's the same spring pressure. And that gives a substance of probably 1.4, 1.6. But if you use vernier calipers for everything, and I like to use the same instrument for everything, um, it's and I'm pushing down nice and firmly on a small across, uh, on a smaller surface area. I am getting a reading here of one point two eight, one point two eight millimeters, and this one is one point three eight. That's going to be less by the time it's greased and bound and tortured into shape and plaited over and all the rest of it. So there's an element of guesswork. I could work out the cross-sectional area arithmetically, but since I have to shove core down here anyway as, as hard as possible, that's the cross-sectional area it's going to be, however, whatever it says in the tin or the calipers. I think that just about wraps it up for theoretical design. Next up, we'll be making one. Ta-ra for now.